I'm drinking coffee and kombucha. I feel very nice. I have a great story to share today. Here's what you're going to get from this story. This story is 12 and a half years old. It's a 12 and a half year old story from the early days of the internet. And hello, hello there. Thank you for thank you for joining the space. We have a listener join the space on Twitter Spaces where I record live every day. And today's going to be a great story. Like I said, it's from the early days of the internet from 12 and a half years ago. It's from 4chan and it is a viral stunt that I did on 4chan for a guy in my college who had a video game radio show where he played video game music. Nobody listened and I felt bad for him. I didn't even know him, but I felt bad for him. Here's what you're going to get from this story. You'll get inspiration for grassroots guerrilla marketing, which is some of my favorite marketing. It's the creative, interesting marketing strategies that you see different individuals and different companies doing, but the things that are so creative that require no budget, that is some of my favorite marketing. And I think it's also some of the most interesting. You'll see what creating a movement on a social network looks like. And you'll get that from somebody who has done it firsthand. I've actually done it many times. And you'll hear about eliciting emotion in terms of marketing and storytelling which I think everybody knows is very important. And when it's done well, it can be very powerful. So let's jump into it. Here's the date. It's December 5th, 2010. How do I know this date? Well, on a previous episode, I said that I track everything. And I do. I track everything. I have this entire story that I'm going to tell you written in painstaking detail in one of my journals. And I have a time machine so I could go back and relive this and then share it with you like I'm doing now. I'm in Boston. It's cold Boston winter. So cold. It's a Sunday night. December 5th, 2010. That was a Sunday. It was a Sunday night and it's cold. And there's this freshman in my college. His name is Gabe. He's a freshman. He must have been 18 or 17, and he's doing this great radio show with video game music, but it's at the god awful hours of dis- of of 12 to 2 a.m. It's at it's such hard hours to do it on. 12 to 2 a.m. and it's on our local college radio station. So he's playing video game music. He's putting a lot of work into the show. He's doing it on the local college radio station, and he's thinking a lot of people are listening. When you when you listen to him, you can tell that he thinks a lot of people are listening. And the reason for that is because the staff keeps the stats secret because they don't want the students to know that most shows get very few listeners, sometimes zero. The staff doesn't want the hosts to get demoralized. How do I find out about the show? I just discover it randomly. I sometimes browse. I sometimes would browse the radio shows on our network, WECB. That was the college network. And I did that because other friends had shows. So I just wanted to hear what was going on. It was was our college. And then I, I tune in one night and I hear video game music. And I love video game music. I say, what is this? And I go and I access the station's analytics and I see that nobody is listening. I have access to these analytics because I have friends who also work there. So friends have shows, but also I have friends who work at the station. And I'm able to see the data that the hosts are not. And I can see, you know, no one's listening. The show is great. So much work is being put into it. There's... There was really only three listeners. And here's who those three listeners were. One is his dad, 
Another is me. And then the third is an unattended office computer. It's a, it's a computer in the radio station's office that is always unattended. And so I feel bad for him. And I tried on 4chan. I, I put up basically a post about the show. I described the show a bit. And it does pretty well. But I put it up right before the show ends. And it gets 18 concurrent listeners in 30 minutes. And then the show ends. So then we fast forward a few weeks later to the 5th of December when I'm home on a Sunday night. And I say, I want to try this again. That's where we are now. And I do it at the beginning of the show. Whereas before I had done it as an experiment at the end of the show, I do it at the beginning of the show. And at this time, my copy is even better. And I say, you know, this kid, he has this video game radio show. He puts so much work into it. It's really good. And nobody listens. The only people listening is three people. It's myself, his dad, and an unattended office computer. Show the kids some love if you like video game music. And that's that's what I write. And then I, I give the link for how to access it. I didn't know the kid. He didn't know me. He didn't know I was doing this. I was doing this because it was fun, because I like video game music, and because I felt bad for Gabe. And so I thought I'd be able to get 30 to 50 concurrent listeners max. That's what I thought would happen based on the pre based on my success from a few weeks ago. So I put up the post and at first I was doing what's called bumping. The way that 4chan works this is on 4chan. The way that 4chan works and 4chan, you know, it's, it, it was one of those early forums on the Internet. It has like a lot of. I think it has uh, a lot of notoriety. There are very bad things associated with 4chan, but also very good things associated with 4chan. And an incredible creativity comes from 4chan, which is one of the reasons why it's a fun place. It wasn't very censored, whereas, I mean, it just wasn't very censored. And so the way that 4chan works is if a post doesn't, if a, if a thread doesn't have people posting in it, the thread gets pushed down by new threads that are getting posts in it. So the person who puts up the post called the OP, the original poster, has to bump, which means they post themselves. And at first, I'm just keeping the thread alive, keeping it at the top of 4chan. It's on this board called B, which is the most popular board on 4chan. And I'm keeping it alive by posting myself. And I have to do this for a little while until people start listening to the show and engaging with it. But it doesn't take long because people engage with it very fast. And then I'm sharing this with another friend. He's in New Jersey. I'm in Boston. My friend puts it on the video game board on 4chan. He just copies my copy. He copies what I wrote, puts it there. Let me tell you something about 4chaners. People on 4chan are fanatics. There are stories of them teaming up to win different competitions, to name boats. I think like 4chan and Reddit did this, like Bodie Mc, Mc, McBoatface. I think they won this competition to name a boat, called it Bodie McBoatface. Swarming restaurants. I would use 4chan in the future to do big viral stunts all over New York City. And if something takes off, it really takes off. And it can take off fast. It can go from 0 to 100 very fast on 4chan. And this took off. And people love this. People loved Gabe. They they liked the music. People love people on 4chan. There were nerds like me. I would call myself a nerd. And I love video game music. And these people, the 4chaners, they loved video game music. People are saying that we're uniting the boards. They like the B board and the, and the video game board, they have like a history of bad blood, but both, both people on, on the boards are loving Gabe's radio show. And we get up to 460 concurrent listeners. And then the servers of the radio station, which is WECB, can't handle anymore. The station gets 100 Facebook fans. 
It's crazy. People are creating threads themselves around this and it is blowing up. It's getting listeners from all over the world. There are people in Spain. It's it's 6 a.m. and it's 8, sorry, it's 8 a.m. in Spain and people aren't going to work because they want to keep listening. People in the U.S., where it's, where it's 2 a.m., they're waiting to go to sleep until the show ends. Normally, the show goes from midnight to 2. And, and Gabe is getting all these calls and instant messages on the station. And he's so hyped. So he keeps the show going another two hours until 4. He got several Facebook friends from this. I didn't write this. But if memory serves, I think one of these people even became his girlfriend. I go to the station at 3.30 a.m. To meet Gabe for the first time. Remember, he didn't know we didn't he didn't know that I existed. But I messaged him as it was blowing up. I said, "Hey, I'm the guy making this happen," and he he invites me down to the station, and I go and I'm on Skype with my friend who's in New Jersey who posted this, and then Gabe puts us on blast. He, he lets us speak to the listeners from 4chan. I still remember that. And I said, you guys are amazing. I was so hyped. Everyone was so excited, even though it was 3.30 in the morning. But I have all these hard facts from journaling. I'm able to share this all from journal from, from journaling it all down. And I, I write how overjoyed Gabe was. The show. So the show ended at 4. I went to bed at 5.30 a.m. This was one of, if not my first times going viral. And another thing that's crazy is this had a legacy at our college. I wrote this five years later. I wrote this on May 29th, 2015. Again, very grateful that I journal. This story became legend at our college, at our college, Emerson College. The story is still used by by the staff at our college every semester to motivate new DJs. It was written into the manual. So it was it was like really big. I mean, we literally like maxed out the servers. And I think it also would have been bigger. But on 4chan, the threads themselves delete if they get too many images. So then the like the original threads were deleting and people were, were creating more. It's also it's partly what makes 4chan so fun, but also max it out and i i will say these grassroots movements like we created they're way better now where you have subscribes and follow and algorithmic recommendations like if this was if this was something live on twitter tons of people would follow the host and then they would get notified when the host did another show or if it was youtube live it would be the same thing subscribe to the host or if it was TikTok live, same thing. IG live, same thing. But this was on a, this was just on a college radio station where you couldn't subscribe and where there weren't algorithms because it wasn't, it wasn't like a big platform where algorithms were recommended every time it was going up. And so the, the people weren't as sticky as they could be. But if you were, if you were to do something like this now, where these mechanisms for staying in touch are in place, I mean, it would really, it would really work well. And it really would ignite a spark. So here are the lessons from this story. I love this story. I'll probably share it again at some point because it's a great story. Lessons are appeal to emotion. I wanted people to feel bad for this for this kid. I wanted people to feel bad for Gabe. I felt bad for Gabe. He's putting in so much work and no one no one was listening. And he, and he thought people were listening and no one was listening. So I, I described that so that I could appeal to people's emotions. Find product market fit. This was a case where Gabe's product, video game music, matched what the market, what the people on 4chan wanted. So it had product market fit. Product is very important. And that's what this, this was a good product in the right market. Social proof. I think something is so much more powerful if somebody else is recommending it rather than the person who is doing it is recommending it That's so much more powerful. And by me being this early adopter, sharing it, I am social proofing the radio show. So it had social proof right from the get go. And then when other people started engaging, it had more social proof. I kept people engaged 
I was sharing listener numbers all the time on the threads, even though like I wasn't supposed to have those listeners, listener numbers, I was sharing it to, to show people like, look, we're really, we're increasing these, the concurrent listeners. This is amazing that a hundred people are in now, 200 people are in now, 250, 300. This is wild. And I'm able to share all of that to keep people engaged. Be humble. It's like the Kendrick song, but Gabe was humble. And we were humble. When we thanked everybody, we were humble. When we thanked people on air, we were humble. When Gabe was on air talking about how crazy this is, Gabe Gabe was humble. And then I think the final lesson is, is journal. Because uh, you can create so many amazing memories in this lifetime. And if you don't write them down, they fade into oblivion. And you also like are more likely to lose the lessons. But I have this all here because I journal it. It was wild. And people people came in, people were listening to Gabe's shows after that as well because he, he did them every week. And so he would get people each week. But again, there were no followers or su subscribe. So people literally had to like set their own personal calendars to go on. This is This was 2010. And so that was a crazy story. I think there's so many lessons in that. It was a very memorable time in my life. And I'm grateful to be able to share that with you. I'm going to give one random lesson from the day I just walked outside. I saw a neighbor. I said hello to him. He said hello back. I felt nice. The lesson, the random lesson of the day is say hello to your neighbors. I just, I like, I like giving warm lessons. That's all for episode number 21 of The Edwards Show. Thank you so much for tuning in. We got a lot of great people who listen to this show. And I want to thank you personally, whoever you are, for listening. I will talk to you tomorrow. Bye.